Uh, in this video for 3D geometry, we will be talking about two topics. Uh, one is the angle work sector of two planes and one is line of intersection of two planes. Uh, both of the topics are important, especially in the line of intersection of two planes and I will be spending some time on that. Angle by sector of two planes is a very easy topic, just sort of like something you have to you should remember while you are preparing for JE. Um, and I will just give you the formula, I will not even be doing a problem on this, but I will be spending some time on this because I think this is a relatively important topic. Okay, so what is so let's say we have a pair of plane uh, and you have to find an angle bisector so that initially so this is the angle bisector uh, and a plane which is the angle bisector of the two planes so this angle is the same as this angle uh, and you have to we have been given equations for p1 p1 and p2 and you have to find this equation of what it would be like. So, uh, now if you think about this, the way the easiest way I think about uh, planes is actually thinking using a notebook. Uh, so, I will always recommend you can do that uh, if you are a little confused. So, now this is let us say I have a plane like this, I have two planes like this, again they are infinite. Uh, so, let us say I have two planes like this, and then one angle bisector would be something which is bisecting this angle, but this plane this plane is, can also be extended into this direction here. So, it can there can also be an angle bisector of this angle between the two planes. So, there is all there are always uh, two angles one is acute one is one is acute and one is obtuse. So, you can find both of equations for both of the planes and the, the way you do it is very simple. So, I will just describe how you uh, find the equation of uh, both kind of planes. Okay. So, again there are two angles obtuse and acute, how will you find angles? Just take the dot product with n1 and n2, you will get an angle either obtuse or acute. So, one would be if there is another angle you can just subtract 180 minus that to get the other angle. All right. So, let us now, uh, let us say we have equations like, I mean this is just the way it has been, this is just literally almost like remembering that how you should do it. So, I am currently writing d1 here, so please take note of this and generally I write generally d on the right hand side, but this time it is here and whenever you get something like this ensure, ensure d1 and d2 are greater than 0. Let me clearly write d1 greater than 0 comma d2 greater than 0, ensure this. So, whatever equation is take this constant to the left hand side and sub multiply by negative if the need is to make this greater than 0. Once you have ensured that then check, check if a1 a2 plus d1 v2 plus c1 c2 is greater than 0. Then check if a1 a2 plus d1 v2 is greater than 0, if it is greater than 0 then a 1 x plus d 1 y plus c 1 z minus d 1 by root of a 1 square plus d 1 square plus c 1 square is equal to a 2 x plus d 2 y square minus d 2 by root of a 2 square c 2 square will be the, uh, this would be the angle, uh, but this will be the angle bisector of the obtuse side, obtuse side and similarly the whole thing, uh, let me just write it down so that there is no confusion. that should be the angle for the acute side. Okay. So, and with a negative sign in front. So, this is only when a 1 a 2 plus b 1 b 2 plus c 1 c 2 is greater than 0 and if it is not greater than 0 uh, and vice versa otherwise. So, the signs would reverse if it this is less than 0. So, vice versa 
if or I mean if it is not layer probably why just say opposite if a 1 a 2 plus b 1 b 2 is less than 0 ok. Think like this. So, whatever the sign of a 1 a 2 plus b 1 b 2 plus c 1 c 2 would be that would be the sign of the obtuse side. So, that is how you can remember that is how I remember, but you again have to ensure d 1 is greater than 0 and d 2 is greater than 0. So, it is a very very uh, it is not a very conceptual thing I mean I can explain to you how this equation was derived it is not hard to see uh, this is actually similar to what you probably have already done in uh, the chapter of vectors where there is uh, there was the discussion of angle bisector of uh, two angles. But I mean that is not the important point here the important point here is to if it comes and if you are being asked just remember this thoroughly uh, it is literally like just being careful with signs and calculations. So, I am not doing a problem in for this you can do very easily construct two, two planes and then just find uh, the angle uh, angle bisector. I think it is pretty straightforward just you have to remember the formulas ok. Now, let us go to the next part which is a very interesting part is the line of intersection of two planes. So, Uh, let us say you have two planes P1 and P2. So, what is the angle, uh, what is the line of intersection of the two planes? That is the line uh, which is this line, this is the intersection of two, line of intersection of two planes. So, again, if you have a notebook, uh, then the way you think about it is that if you have a notebook like this, then this line uh, is a line of intersection. So, uh, just take a notebook and look at this line, and this is your line of intersection. So, how would you find uh, the equation of the line? So, if you know P 1 and P 2 and the question would be how would you find this line L here? How would you define this? So, what do you need to define a line? You need a parallel vector. So, with P 1 you will have one n vector, n 1 vector and n 2 vector and now you need a point here a vector of a point and you need a parallel vector. Okay. So, what is the property of this parallel vector? The property of this parallel vector is that it, it lies on both, it is parallel to both P 1 and P 2 planes right, because it, it is parallel to the line and the line is in both the planes. So, it is parallel to both plane P 1 and both plane P 2. So, in other words it is perpendicular to both N 1 and N 2 and as soon as I say this it should flash into your mind that B vector, that B vector is N 1 cross N 2 that b vector is n 1 cross, I mean this is just something straight out of the cross product definition that b, b vector is equal to n 1 cross n 2. And please, please, please uh, you should recall the chapter of vectors if you are forgetting please always remember how to do that. So, you first step you will do is you will do find n 1 cross n 2 for b vector and the second thing you would do is find a common point, find point by putting one coordinate to be 0, putting one coordinate to 0. So, I will solve the problem. So, that will hopefully make it easier for you to. So, the equation for P 1 that has been given to you uh, is x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So, this is x plus y plus z is equal to 1 and the other thing that the other plane has been given to you is x minus y plus z is equal to 1 ok, x minus y plus z is equal to 1. So, first thing we have to do is we have to find b vector. So, what is n 1 vector that is i cap plus j cap plus k cap and n 2 vector is i cap minus j cap plus k cap. Now, b vector would be i j k 1 1 1 1, one minus 1 1 and you if you open this up it will come 2 i cap two i cap minus 2 k cap ok. This is what you will get and you can check by taking a dot with both of them this is 2 minus 2 0 and 2 minus 2 0. 
So, this is uh, a vector that is perpendicular to both n 1 and n 2. So, this is the vector parallel to the line uh, and then you have to find a point on the line which is how to find. Uh, so, this was step 1, the step 2 would be, so we can put any coordinate to be 0, let us put z is equal to 0 in both the planes. So, what we are doing is uh, we have to find a point, so we have to get the x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinate, but there are two equations and three variables. So, we are putting one coordinate to be 0. Uh, so, if you put z is equal to 0, then you just have two equations and two variables and then you know the point, right. So, we have now x plus y is equal to 1 and x minus y is equal to 1. So, if you that will give you x is equal to half and uh, y is equal to also half. So, sorry, uh, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0 actually. So, this will become x plus y equal to 1 and x minus y equal to 1. So, this becomes x equal to 1 comma y is equal to 0. So, the point A is 1 comma 0 comma 0. So, equation of line L is actually i cap plus lambda 2 i cap minus 2 k cap. Okay. So, this line would lie in both plane 1 and plane 2 uh, and you can also write it in the coordinate form, let us just write it in the coordinate form also. So, x minus 1 by 2 is equal to y minus 0 by 0, so that means y is equal to 0. So, y minus 0 by 0 is equal to z by minus 2. Okay. So, I hope that this made sense, gave you a good idea of what it means. So, line of intersection like a notebook is a line common to both the planes, it is perpendicular to both n1 and n2, so it has to the parallel vector has to be n1 cross n2 and then you can find the point by putting one putting one coordinate to be 0. So, this was the topic for angle bisector of two planes and line of intersection of two planes. The next video now we will start mixing up line and planes and points and planes and things like that. So, I hope to see you in the next video, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank